Thank you so much for tuning in to Flowing Life, where we love God, love people, and we live life. This is living. Turn with me to Mark chapter 16. <clears throat> we have a lot to cover today, um, but I want to say what I believe that God has given me to share um, and move on. <clears throat> Mark chapter 16, if you're there, say I'm there. All right, sounds like most people. You need a second? Anybody need a second? All right, Mark chapter 16. I just want you to turn there. <clears throat> and I want to make a statement that I believe in this season, God is looking for a people that will believe him. In all caps, believe him. I believe that in this season, God is looking for a people that will believe him, a people that will take him at his word against all unbelief, against all doubts, to be able to stand firm on his word. <clears throat> um, I think we're living in a space right now in history where, um, and, and let me be specific, um, as far as, it, as far as Christianity goes, as far as our faith in God goes, I believe that we're living in a space right now where a lot of people are questioning God. A lot of people are doubting God. God, are you who you said you are? God, I believe, but help my unbelief. A place where I believe we've come through some of the worst parts of the pandemic on the tail end of this, and now even in the body of Christ, having believers that are still scared, still full of fear, still believing every report that they hear on the news, still taking horrible advice from people who are operating in fear, trying to cripple you, and as a believer, if God sustained you through all of this, can he not continue to sustain you? If God can't keep you, then nothing else can. I told y'all last week that this year we are, as a ministry, going on the mission field. We are going on the mission field. This will be our first year. We're coming up on four years, and this will be our first year going overseas onto the mission field. We are not afraid. I wish I had at least two people. We are not afraid. There is no fear. Oh, y'all going to go on an airplane? Y'all going to go all the way across the water? Y'all going to go into third world countries where, where the pandemic is, is still at its peak? Y'all going to go into places where you don't know what kind of viruses, diseases that people are dealing with? I believe that we're living in a time where Christians are scared where even now some people are still scared to come into the physical building of the church. I don't want to catch nothing. But you still go to Walmart. But you still go to Target. But you're still hanging out everywhere else where you want to go, but people are scared to come into the building. But people are afraid to fulfill the Great Commission. Don't worry about that spit that came out of my mouth. I'm passionate about this. Y'all scared to fulfill the Great Commission. Go ye therefore to all nations, and preach the gospel, don't miss this, and baptize them. Scared to fulfill the Great Commission because of a pandemic, because of persecution. I don't know what they're going to say about me. They're going to think I'm crazy. Well, what if? What about? Worrying about what problems we're dealing with. This is a whole nother situation. As a believer, I'm, I'm, and y'all, y'all, y'all excuse me this morning because we, 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 we really got to plow through, through two years worth of, I believe, some hardness that Christians have, have, have taken in, some stones that are blocking up your heart. All right, I'm going to get to the scripture. I'm going to get to the scripture. Some stones that are clogging up your spirit, man, because this last two years have made a lot of us hard, have made a lot of us, now I ain't going to include me in that, have, have made a lot of people scared, have made a lot of people fearful. And so now moving forward, you're walking with a limp. You're walking with that thing that has crippled you the last two years. And so now when God says, go, I, got, I, don't, I, don't, know, I don't know if I'm. 
Now when God tries to send you, you're worried about what you experienced the last two years instead of moving and what he's giving you now. Well, God, right now the economy ain't straight yet. I don't know if I can jump out yet. Right now I don't got the finances in place yet. I don't know. The housing market is crazy, God. I don't know if I can make this move right now. I don't know if I have the resources. I don't know if people want to answer the call. I don't have the right people in place. You know, people don't want to come out right now. What did I tell you to do? God is raising up a military of believers that will believe him against all unbelief. Let's read Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, this is what it says. Now when the Sabbath was passed, Sabbath is Saturday, I don't have time to explain it. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of, of, of James and Salome bought spices and they might come to anoint him. Talking about Jesus. Jesus has already died, right? Jesus has died. He's in the tomb. They're coming now to anoint him. Um, if, you, if you read about uh, Joseph, the man who put him in the tomb, you'll find out that the hour was late. They really didn't have time to do what they wanted to do with the body of Jesus. And so it's believed that maybe they were coming to embalm or, or what in their day was considered embalming so that the body wouldn't stink. All right. They were coming to anoint Jesus's body. Just follow me. Verse two, very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen and they said amongst themselves, this is before they got to the tomb, they said amongst themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? Who will roll away the stone? They've not gotten to the tomb yet, but before they even get to the tomb, they're already looking for somebody to do Something that has already been done, right? I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but y'all, y'all familiar with this passage. Who is going to roll away the stone? Who's going to make things better before I can actually do it? Who, who, God, I need to talk to y'all this morning. I'm already expecting it to be clogged up because all that I understand about Jesus at this point is what I've known up to this point. Y'all got to consider, nobody, ain't nobody died on the cross like this and come back to life. So I expect what has been my experience that can preach all by itself. I'm expecting what has been my past experience. If you die, you are dead, right? Jesus died. I'm coming to the tomb expecting a dead man, but I still need somebody to remove the stone in order for me to get access to this dead man, right? Let's dig. Verse five, and entering the tomb, they saw a young man, um, let me see, verse four, but when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large, right? They make, the the Bible's very intentional. They said it was very large because it it implies that no human, no man could have rolled this thing away or it might have taken a bunch of people or this is something that we don't have the capacity to be able to move ourselves. Verse uh, verse five, and entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is risen. This sounds crazy. I know, I know, I know. Y'all, y'all looking back on this in retrospect, it's like, oh, I know. Resurrection Sunday it is about. I know what Life Sunday is about. We're celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but they had never seen this before. This was brand new. This did not make sense to them. And it says in verse 7, But go tell the disciples and Peter that he is going before you in Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. Stop right there. They come to the tomb. They find that Jesus is not there. There's a man clothed in white, and he says he's not here. He has risen. But then he gives them an instruction. He says, now go. Somebody say go. Go. He says, now go and tell the disciples and Peter. Don't that sound like discipleship? Don't that sound like the Great Commission? What is the gospel? The gospel is the good news that Jesus saves, that he died, 
and that he rose from the dead so that we could have life in Christ. That is the gospel. That is the good news. Essentially, this man tells her, go share the good news. I ain't going to talk about this this morning, but it seems that the very first messenger of Christ, the very first person to be sent out with God's word just happens to be a woman. Just happens to be the person in this time that was an unlikely person. You're supposed to be seen and not heard. It is not your job to be preaching. It is not your job to be declaring the word of the Lord. And unlikely, let's remove your mind from the fact that it's a woman. That can go a whole nother way. The fact that it is an unlikely person that is, that, that, that is in a position to carry a very, very important message to the disciples who were the closest ones to Jesus. He says, now go and tell them what just happened. <clears throat> Something interesting happens on this next verse. This is what it says in verse 8. It says, so they went. Somebody says, so they went. My God, I'm going to do your will. They went out quickly and fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The word was given. He said, go, tell them what's been done. Now, before you become judgmental, of how they reacted, because you're looking back on it in retrospect, and you're thinking, man, how could they possibly have done that? All right. They're experiencing something they never experienced. They are coming through a traumatic experience. The person that I've fallen in love with, that I finally trusted, that I've finally given my heart to, the person that I could finally commit myself to wholly and trust them with everything that I have, the person who in Mary Magdalene, um, who who Jesus cast out demons, right? The the, the, the people that God God restored, that he delivered, that he redeemed. Now I finally got to a point, God, where I can trust you and you leave me. You go on and die. How am I supposed to believe that you're alive? I'm wrestling with this tension after this traumatic experience. I know what you're telling me to do, but I also know how I feel. You've given me an instruction, but I don't feel like telling nobody. I don't feel like going. Everything that I've experienced up to this point tells me that I probably shouldn't. I don't know if I can get let down again. I don't know if my heart can be broken again. I don't know if I go and I'm going to tell them what you told me to say and then you don't show up and they're going to call me a fool and they're going to say I'm ridiculous. God is raising up believers that will trust him at his word, regardless of how you feel about it, what you think about it, what's going on in your current situation. He needs you to trust him against all unbelief. All right, God, I believe that you can sustain me. I believe that you can keep me. I don't care what you're going through. I'm very intentional about my words. I don't normally say I don't care. I normally say "Eh, it doesn't matter. No, I don't care what you're going through at this point. I don't care what your problem is. I don't care what your situation is. I don't care what your circumstance is. Whatever it is that you brought into this building today, or maybe you took it off like a cloud. I'm coming to the house of the Lord. I'm going to take it off and act like I don't got no problem. I'm going to walk out the door and I'm going to put on my burdens for the week. I don't care what you're dealing with right now in your life. God is asking you to simply cooperate with what he desires to do in your life. And that simply just takes for you to have faith. Will you believe he is who he says he is? Because if you don't, then your actions will reflect what you believe. That's a mouthful. Your actions will reflect what you believe. And so then when you find yourself in a rut, you'll find yourself complaining. And complaining reflects that, God, you ain't going to come through for me, are you? God, maybe this is the only way that it will ever be. Maybe it will never get any better than what it is right now. Maybe the best days are actually behind me. Your actions reflect what you believe. He said, go. Their actions reflected what they believed. They were afraid. They were scared. God, I know what you told me to do. But according to my situation, according to the tension that I'm wrestling with in my mind, 
I don't know if I can do this. It says in the very next verse, in verse 9, Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him. She actually did it. She did it. She did it. I, gotta, I have to encourage somebody this morning. Because I'm, I'm sure there's somebody listening to this message this morning like, Pastor Todd, man, I feel like I missed it. I feel like I messed it up. God gave me an instruction I didn't follow through. He gave me a window of opportunity and I didn't take it. I feel like I missed it. I feel like I might have to wait another five years before this opportunity comes. God, I feel like I messed it up. Maybe I feel like I sinned. I backslid. Maybe I did something to offend you. This is an opportunity for you today on Life Sunday, on Resurrection Sunday, to take God at his word. That when he got up from the grave, that he rose with resurrection power. And this is the same power that lives on the inside of us. This woman went out and did what she was told to do after she didn't do it. After disobedience. After delayed obedience. After she admitted that they were afraid. She still did it. She still did it. And God still used her to get out the message even to the disciples. Who am I talking to this morning that needs to know that God still wants to use you? It doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter what you've come through. You might be the person this morning that's kicking and clawing and scratching and you just fought your way to be in the building. You just fought your way to log in online this morning. But God wants you to know I can still use you. How willing are you to be used? And when I give you a word to go, will you do it? Or will you make up an excuse about why you can't? Well, God, the, the way my health is set up right now, I just don't. Can he not heal your body? Well, oh, God, the, the way my relationships are set up, you know, if they're going to be in the room, I can't, I can't. Can he not mend what has been broken? How we respond and how we react is a direct result of what we believe. It says in verse 10, she went, she went. Those who had been with him, I'm sorry, y'all, I don't have a title for this message. Y'all can um, do it. Y'all said it at the same time. Go! Exclamation mark. This is what it says in verse 10. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. As they mourned and wept. And when they heard that he was alive, he's talking to the disciples, and, has, and had been seen by her, what does your Bible say right after that? They did not believe. Y'all, we talking about the disciples. We talking about the guys that would go on to become the apostles. We're talking about the very people who laid the framework and the foundation of the Bible and, and, and the Christian faith of what we believe today. They did not believe. It actually says at the end of verse, verse 10, as they mourned and wept. They're mourning. They're weeping. They're mourning. They're weeping. They'd been with Jesus all of this time. Jesus told them on countless situations, hey, I got to go away for a few days, but don't worry, I'll be back. I'm going to tear down this body, but then I'm going to raise it back up in three days. He told him, hey, it's time for me to come. Judas, go do your thing. I already know that I have to die, but I'm coming back. It's going to be a few days before y'all see me, but I'll be right back. He told him many, 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 many times. And still, after he dies, they don't believe. They're mourning and they're weeping. But even in the midst of it, Mary still has to give them a hard message, even in the midst of their mourning. Guess what? He's alive. I got good news and it doesn't seem like good news to them because their logic doesn't make sense. It, it, it doesn't make sense that he could be alive. We've never seen this before. This has never happened before. Their hearts were broken as well. To make this make sense. So they did not believe because they didn't take God at his word. They didn't take Jesus at his word from the beginning. Now they came back around after time. They, they, they had to put their fingers 
in his hands. They had to see him come through a wall. Y'all go back and read this later. They had to see him in the flesh. But I wonder how many of y'all, similar to like Jesus said, um, how, how many of y'all would be able to believe him without seeing him? Gosh, Lord, help me get this out. I'm almost done. Y'all, y'all are blessed because y'all get to, this, this, is, this is what Jesus shares with them. Y- y'all are blessed because y'all get to see me in the flesh. Y'all get to touch me. Y'all get, y'all get to feel me. Y'all get to hear me, me, me speak to you face to face. But once I'm gone, blessed are those who are able to believe me without seeing me. Blessed are the ones who can maintain their faith, even though, God, right now, I don't feel you. God, right now, this feels like a murky situation. I don't I don't see up from down. I don't know which way to go. I don't know what decision to make. But God, I still trust you. God, I still know that I need to put my faith in you, even though my situation right now don't look like you in it at all. My life don't even reflect that you're living or that I have resurrection power right now. Things feel dark. Right now, things feel dead. When I speak to something, I don't see nothing happen. Every time I declare something, I don't see nothing move. God, I believe you even though I don't see you. I believe you. If you spoke it, I'm taking it to the bank. It's as good as cash. If he said it, it will come to pass. If he made you a promise... He will protect what he has promised. Oh, my God. Ain't an ounce of fear in here. If God gives you a word and tells you to go somewhere, we ain't worried about what's going to happen. We ain't worried about the people around us. Oh, that man, they they, they crazy over there. They just shooting over there. If he sent you to the projects, you need to go to the projects. If he sent you to go encourage people in the hood, if he sent you there, he'll protect you in it. He'll keep you in it. He'll guard you in it. If he sends you overseas, then can he not protect your physical body? I said this a few weeks ago, that God is with his promise. He is faithful to his promise. And if you will follow after the promise that he has made to you, if you will be obedient to what he has spoken to you, if you would follow after, after he says go, then his protection comes with his presence. His presence is with his promise, right? If I'm connected to God, if I'm walking with God, I don't care where we go. God, we can walk through some storms. I don't care as long as I got your hand, as long as you with me. I I don't don't care what's going on, right? As long as I know that God is with me, we're going to be good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just need to encourage y'all this morning because um, we as believers, this ain't the time to shrink back. This ain't the time Ah, gosh. <clears throat> Believers are like... The, Believers right now are almost on autopilot. It's like we've come through so much. Um, and we don't know what this new normal looks like and feels like. What, 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 what is church supposed to look like? How how is it supposed to feel? Because the the, the church that we once knew, I hope I don't mess nobody up with this, it's gone. Nothing nothing is the same. Nothing is what it was before. The pandemic has exposed. It's revealed. And for those who are strong, it's made them stronger. For some who didn't quite have things in place, then you found out, man, I'm not as strong as I thought I was. Maybe I got some kinks. Maybe I got some cracks in my faith and those things were exposed. And so now as a body of Christ, as people are starting to trickle back into the physical building, as some people are starting to come back into the faith and some not making it back because of the traumatic experiences, now we're at a space right now where God is raising up people who will believe him at his word. I don't care if another pandemic comes later on this year. God will sustain us in it. I don't care if I wake up tomorrow morning and I, I, I get an unexpected bill in the mail for more than what I got in the bank. I believe 
your word. I will stand firm. My faith is strong. Can I say this this morning? We're not raising up no punks in the body of Christ. You have to be firm on what you believe that God has given you to do. That your feet need to be planted in that ground that he has dug you in, that he has planted you in. Unmovable, unshakable, unwavering. That whatever comes against you, having to know, having it settled on the inside of you before it comes. Oh, God help me. Um, it's amazing to me that we have not had to shut down our church during the pandemic. We had to go virtual for a time. I think it was probably about six months or so but still came into the building. Still came into the building every week to preach while I got the luxury of being at home, sitting in your pajamas with your coffee and your snacks and you put it up on your TV and and, and, and you get to chill and you get to relax and it becomes comfortable. Not once. I just need y'all to know what type of ministry and what type of church and what type of pastors that you're connected to. Not once did your leaders just sit at home and just say, well, you know what? How about we just set up something real convenient? How how, 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 how about we just just stream from home and just make it comfortable? That way we don't got to go in to the building. How how about moving forward, we just do completely virtual? How, how how, how, How about we shut down? How about, no, you have leaders that are not afraid. You have leaders who have stood firm throughout. Have y'all not seen consistency in this ministry? Have you not seen consistency throughout? The body of Christ needs to see in you a people, a Christian, a believer who will stand firm even in the midst of adversity. They are looking for answers. They are looking. Man, how did you do it? How, how did you keep moving? How did you have a word even though it seemed like it was out of season? When everybody else was struck, man, you know what? I can't do it. I can't go into the building. I can't even stream right now. I don't even want to hear nothing about Christianity. I'm sure y'all know people who have fallen away from the faith during this time. But then people come to you. How how you do? You've been so consistent. You've been so faithful. You've been seeking God. You've, you've been so strong. My faith is unwavering. It's unshakable. It's unmovable. But even if you're the person under the sound of my voice this morning that says, man, you know what, Pastor? My faith has been shaken. My faith has been, a, been moved a little bit. My faith has been a little wavering. It's been a little bit rocky. Then you can be encouraged this morning by the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. In the same, I don't know about y'all, man, but for me it brings me consolation when I read that he appeared to these women and they, didn't, and, and, and they were fearful. I don't know about y'all, but it brings me consolation to know that they went to the disciples and the disciples did not believe. In a way, it's kind of like, hey, I, I feel a little bit better, man, because I felt like that too. You know what? This, 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 last, this last part right here, this last part right here. In verse 7, it says, but go tell the disciples and Peter. I didn't even get to my notes this morning, y'all. It says, go to the disciples, go tell the disciples and Peter. In Mark chapter 16, verse 7, he's talking to Mary, and he says, go tell the disciples and Peter. Y'all saw that? Y'all see that? Go tell the disciples, hyphen, and Peter. Go tell the disciples and Peter. Go tell the disciples and Peter. Again, they've just come through a very hard time. They just lost the person that they had put all of their hope in, and now he's gone. The person that, 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 they, that it, they had invested themselves into has now been taken away, has now been removed, right? He says, go tell the disciples and Peter, because the night that he was forsaken, it said that everybody scattered. It said, and all forsook him. Didn't just say Peter, all of them forsook him. But we believe that the disciples kind of circled back, but Peter probably still had this thing hanging over his head. Because nowhere else in the scripture does it say that the other, that the other disciples denied him three times. Nowhere else does it say that the disciples also um, denied Jesus before the public. So mention this about Peter. So I can imagine that he, like many of us, was probably experiencing that condemnation, 
that guilt hanging over their head. God, I know I should have been faithful during this traumatic time, but I've not been. I know I should have been strong like everybody else, but I got to be honest with myself. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling weak right now, even though I know that I'm the person you're supposed to be building your church on. I know that I have a calling. I know that I'm anointed for this. I know that I have a gift, but right now I don't feel like the person that you're supposed to be building anything on. He says, go and tell the disciples and Peter, because maybe Peter was feeling like, I don't, I don't need to be a disciple after this. Maybe I'm pulling myself out. Maybe, may, I can imagine that Peter was probably like, let me, let me go ahead and throw in my resignation. I, I, don't think I, can, I, I, don't, I don't think I can do this any longer because I don't think that I measure up to his standard for being able to carry out what he's requiring of me. Who am I talking to this morning? I don't live up to your standard, God. I don't live up to your requirements. So let me go ahead and discount myself. Let me go ahead and count myself out before you expect too much of me. I'm here to tell you this morning that everything that he put on the inside of you, it wasn't a mistake. He got the right person. When he chose you, when he selected you, he put it in. He put that fight in Peter for a reason. Peter was a rebel for a reason. Because this is the person I need to build my church. Listen, y'all. Oh, my God. This makes sense now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We need believers who will stand firm in the faith. We need believers almost borderline like, I'll fight somebody. We, we need believers almost like kind of on the edge like, I'll chop off somebody's ear if they talk bad about Jesus. Like, this is the person that Jesus used to build his church. So what does this say about what God wants from us as believers? Now I'm not giving you permission to go out and... <laughs> this, this, this is almost a direct um, symbolism of what God expects from the church. For a people who will rise up. Yeah, Jesus had to rebuke Peter. Yeah, he had to reel him in when he got out too far. But I'd rather God have to reel me in for going too far than for me to be sitting on the bench. All right, God, I ain't ready to go. I don't want to go nowhere. I'd rather be the person like, no, I'm going for it. I'm, 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 going, I'm going to fulfill the great commission. And then God has to, all right, reel it in a little bit. You can go on back a little bit. Because I know that I'd be able to cooperate with what he wants to do in my life. I just want to see some believers that are strong in the faith. That if you can't get in touch with pastor, you know how to contact God. That you know how to have an encounter with God right in your space at home and not feeling like I got to wait until Sunday to come into the building. A body of believers that even when you even when something unexpected comes up, that you don't go shrink back in the corner and start crying. Ain't nothing wrong with crying. Ain't nothing wrong with you experiencing your emotions. But when those emotions start to overtake your faith, God, I believe you are who you said you are. And ain't nothing going to change that. Everybody stand to your feet. Let's pray. Maybe I'll say these notes for next week. Glory to God. Stand to your feet. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, I thank you for a body of believers that you're raising up in this time. Glory to God. A people that are going to carry the church into this new season of freshness of anointing, of glory. Thank you, Jesus. A people who will be intentional about going on the offense to take territories for the glory of God. A people who will no longer sit back on the defensive complaining about what Satan has been doing to them or how he's boxed them in, but a people who would take authority and go after what belongs to God. I thank you that you're raising up people who are piercing the darkness, that are not complaining about the darkness, that will be light in the midst of darkness. God, I thank you that you are strengthening feeble bones. God, that you're restoring brokenness. God, that you are healing bodies that have been banged up in these last couple years. God, I thank you that you're restoring mental strength, capacity, and health in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you're restoring families, that you're restoring relationships. God, that you are raising up a people who will take you at your word. Whatever you tell us, we'll do it. Wherever you send us, we'll go. Glory to God. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Send us out, Lord. Help us to be strong in our faith. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. <clears throat> I want to pray specifically this morning <sighs> for anybody who feels like they need to be either refreshed or restoration. I want you to just step out of your seat and just walk up to the front so that we can pray for you. If that's anybody under the sound of my voice or even if you're streaming online, you can put it in the stream. I want to pray for you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God for refreshing and restoration. Thank you, Jesus. God, I thank you that the old is being washed away. That the residue of the past is being purified and cleansed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, God. Thank you, Lord. I see you online. We'll pray with you. If there's anybody here in the building, you can join us at the front and we'll pray together. Thank you, Jesus for refreshing and for restoration. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you. God, I thank you that you're refreshing, that you're restoring. Thank you. Yeah, so I, what I see is what I see is spiritual cobwebs. Can't see it physically. On the outside looking in, it looks clean, it looks new. But I see cobwebs in the spirit. I see gifts that have been inactive for years. I see a faith that hasn't been stirred up in months. Father, today I thank you that their faith is being restored in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, that you are making their foundation strong again. God, that you are restoring what has been lost, not just like it was before, but that you would make it tenfold better than what it was before. God, I thank you for the spiritual gifts and that their spiritual capacity will be expanded. Father, with this simple step of faith, Father, I thank you that you are reclaiming them back to perfect use. That purpose will be fulfilled. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That they will begin to see the freshness of your glory. That they won't even speak the same. That they'll begin to notice the radiance of your glory and the light of your presence, even as they go back to what seems like some dark situations. Their situation may not have changed, but today you're doing something different on the inside of them. 
that when they go back to that same situation, that the resurrection power now dwelling on the inside of them will bring about transformation. God, I thank you for life that you're putting in their mouth. That whatever they declare and speak, that you consider it so in the heavens. Hallelujah. Thank you for those who have responded this morning. That they will experience this new life in Christ. Glory to God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the service today. In case you missed any part of the message, no worries. All of our messages are archived on our YouTube channel. Feel free to click the channel, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification button so you get all the latest videos that we have as soon as they air. If you are blessed by the message today and you feel led to sow into the ministry, you can do so online on our website or via our cash app. For more information about the upcoming events, please follow us on our social media platforms on Facebook and Instagram. Feel free to share anything that you've learned today with a friend and invite them to join you next week right here on our live broadcast. Lastly, thank you so much for tuning in to Flowing Life, where we love God, love people, and we live life. This is living.